We want to welcome you to Haynes Ministries. This is a Word and Do Season Bible study, and tonight we're going to be going over the Gospel of Matthew in the sixth chapter. We're going to talk about worrying, and we're going to start in verse 25. But I think before we get started, I'm going to ask my wife Susan to open up with prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your, the blessing and the privilege it is to gather together and to learn of you and share your words with others, God. We pray, Lord, that, that you would, would just give us a great revelation of your word. And this is a, a serious problem many of us have, uh, sometimes all the time and sometimes off and on, is worrying. And Lord, we just pray that your word would set us free because your word says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Thank you for the leading, guiding of your Holy Spirit and bless our listening audience in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to welcome you tonight. We, we uh, Before I get started, though, I'd like to give a few starting announcements. And, and that's next Tuesday, May 24th, 2016, at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be having our next bi-weekly prayer meeting Amen. so if you have any prayer requests get them to us we want to pray for them and we do pray for your prayer we, requests personally we, we pray for your prayer request and and uh, we have a website it's just simply haynesministries.org our contact information is there you can send us a message an email whatever whatever you want to do uh, we have just give us your prayer request and we'll pray. And then, of course, our next Bible study will be the Tuesday after that, which will be uh, May 31st at 7 p.m. Central Time. And uh, our next Communion Tuesday is going to be June 14th, 2016. We want you to join us then. We have the Communion, uh, the first, two, first Bible study Tuesday of every month. And, and it's going to be the 14th this time and uh and just to kind of recap just very very briefly last time we talked about uh, what jesus had to say about fasting and about what he had to say about money <clears throat> so anyway <clears throat> next jesus is going to start teaching about worry so what happens if someone's not worrying about money well they're just worrying in general amen <laughs> <laughs> But Jesus is telling us, hey, I don't want you to worry. He's the sustainer of all life. He literally spoke the universe into existence. He can, he can uh, uh, speak into our lives and, and uh, speak only good. Amen? That's right. The Lord has come to do good and not evil all the days of our life. Amen? So starting with our text in the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, I'm going to be starting... In the 25th verse, it says, Therefore, I tell you. Now, now he's talking about uh, the therefore is because he just got through talking about money. Uh, this is part nine. You might want to watch part eight to kind of catch up where we are. And uh, so anyway, he just got through talking about money. So in verse 25, he's saying, Therefore, I tell you. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body <coughs> more important than clothes? Verse 26, it says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. In verse 30 it says, If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, 
O you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You know, you know, like I was pointing out just, just a while ago in Matthew chapter 6, from verses 19 to 24, Jesus was teaching his disciples about money. Uh, the Lord was telling them in, in verse 24 that you can't serve both God and money. Jesus is just simply telling them not to let money be their God. Yes, it's okay to have money. Just don't let your money have you. Now, he's telling his disciples, he taught them about money, and now he's teaching them about worry. Uh, what's the first thing a rich person does when he gets a lot of wealth? Well, he worries about getting more. What happens when a poor man has less money? He worries about getting more. So Jesus is just telling them, hey, there's more to life than just money. There's more to life than just making money. You know, get your priorities in order Amen. here. You know, uh, we're going to find that out here uh, briefly. But as we begin in Matthew 6 and verse 25, the first word Jesus uses is therefore. And then he goes on to say, do not worry. Uh, in other words, Jesus is saying, hey, you're going to be taken care of. Now, of course, the intent is not to cultivate a carefree, irresponsible attitude that refuses to work or plan for the future. But the question is this. Is not life more important than food and the body more than clothes? Amen. Yes, it's just fine to start for yourselves a retirement plan. Don't, don't think for me. You know, the Lord could come tonight, but act like it's 30 years down the road. Amen. Uh, it's okay to start a re retirement plan, a 401k and and all those things, and it's and it's just fine to set up a budget for your household each and every month. Amen. God doesn't want us to be irresponsible. Amen. Um, it's okay to do those things, and yes, the redeemed of the Lord still need to pay their bills and buy their groceries. That's right. And of course, the more than conquerors still need to mow the yard and do the laundry and get the kids to school and the like. Amen. Uh, you know, don't uh, don't go just the opposite. Well, I'm just going to quit worrying about everything. Of course, God doesn't want us to worry, but but don't start living such a carefree life that you don't get anything done or anything accomplished. Hey, Amen. That's not what God intended. He's just saying, "Hey, I'm going to take care of you. Don't put your don't don't lust after money. Uh, don't lust after the material things. Uh, you know." Uh, Jesus is just simply teaching his disciples spiritual priorities. He's saying, don't be so consumed about acquiring the material things that you put the spiritual things at the bottom of the list. You know, Amen. If, what, what, what happens? That's supposed to come first. Seek first the yeah. kingdom of, of God. And his righteousness and all these things will be added. You know, if, if you're broke, are you going to feel like preaching the gospel? If you're rich, are you going to be too busy to preach the gospel? Doing stuff, going here and there. And God is saying, hey, just don't let the money have you. Don't let the money have control of you. And, uh, and that includes worrying about it and worrying about having your needs met. Amen. So, could, could I... Yeah, um, go ahead. Um, I have a little... Uh, Definition of the word worry. Here it comes from a Greek word, uh, merimno, and it means to divide into parts. The word suggests a distraction, a preoccupation with things, 
causing anxiety, stress, and pressure. Jesus speaks against worry and anxiety because of the watchful care of a heavenly Father who's ever mindful of our daily needs. Amen. And, and could I add another yeah, yeah. excerpt here? You know, even though we are talking about provision, and a lot of us worry about where things are going to come from, that's what Jesus is talking here too. But we also, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, the Word of God says, My God shall supply all of my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And there's a scripture, in, another scripture in Matthew that's, that here, this is my um, paraphrase, according to yeah. Susan Haynes, worry can choke the life out of you. Yeah. Worry can choke God's word out of you. And and in Matthew 13, 22, I just want to read a yeah, little and well, then I'll ahead. let you get on go ahead. with it. But in Matthew 13, 22, you can go back and read the, uh, the rest of the story later if you want to, but this is talking about a parable, an interpretation of a parable that Jesus had told about a sower sowing seed. In verse 22, it says, Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, that's the word of God, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. Yeah. So whether you're worrying about where you're going to get your next meal, how you're going to close your kids, uh, worrying about how you're going to deal with your job the next day, worrying about how you're going to deal with a difficult uh, family problem or, or paying <clears throat> bills or situation, this worry can actually choke God's word yeah. out of our, our heart and and. And that old expression, choke the life out of you, that's where that comes from because God's word is life and life abundantly. And so God's word and his truth sets us free. So if we spend our time worrying instead of just seeking God, like we were talking about, we're not going to get anywhere and the enemy will start putting all kinds of lies into our hearts and into our minds and keep us from fulfilling God's will in yeah. our life. Okay, I just had to do that. Yeah. I was studying this this morning, and that's just what came to me. So I, I just had to insert my little commercial there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, I just wanted to go on and say that uh, Jesus goes on to say that in... in well, go ahead and read uh, Matthew 6, verse 26. Read it again. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? You know, the birds of the air. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but so far, I had never seen a bird flying through the air, flapping his wings, saying, I believe I receive, I believe I receive. Have you? Well, I didn't think so. I haven't either. But, uh, you know, these birds of the air, they don't fly around saying, I believe I receive. I and believe they're not I worried. Receive. They're not worried about it. They're not him. worrying where their next meal's coming from. You, you know, how many of you, I'm sure, I know everybody has, including the wife and I, we driven down the highway on a warm summer night uh, with your headlights on and and you see these multiple multitudes of flying bugs planting against your windshield. Well, those bugs are the food supply for the lower life forms, such as the birds of the air. And look how God abundantly supplies for them. Yes. Uh, if God wants to supply those birds with that much of abundance of food, just think how he wants to supply for us amen amen that's right amen you know it went on to say that the lord even clothes the fields of the earth with glorious splendor you know how much more does he want us to be clothed amen amen i, I mean um, i've been we've been driving down the road and i see all these wildflowers off to the side they're really coming up this yeah. time of year it's just beautiful yeah uh, you know, I mean, God God wants to put clothes on our back and 
he wants to put a robe on her back and a ring on her finger, amen. And he wants to put food in her mouth. That's right. You know, he wants her bills paid. Uh, he wants her groceries bought. So, you know, God, God's well labeled, amen. Yes, and, and we need to continue just seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. You know, Susie was pointing out a while ago about verse 33, you know, how it said to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You know, what do you do? God wants us to walk and live uprightly, amen? Amen. I mean, he doesn't want us to live like sinners six days a week and then be all holy on Sunday or whenever it is you go to church. Uh, God wants us to be upright each and every day, spend time with Him in prayer and in, in His Word, get to know Him. But He wants us to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and then all these things are going to be given to you. You might be saying, what things? Well, finances, food, clothing, and the like. God knows that we have need of these things. Amen. You know, the Lord finishes chapter 6 by saying, Do not worry about tomorrow. You know what? We serve a big God. We serve a God so mighty He's already seen tomorrow. And guess what? He's already taken care of it. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, we used to have an, uh, a pastor years ago, Pastor... Mercer, yeah. Pastor Dale Mercer. And I remember him telling me, you know, I'd call him up on the phone, there'd be something going on, I'd ask prayer for, and he'd say, Susan, God has given you enough grace for today. Yeah. Now, God wants us to take one day at a time. He doesn't want us worrying about tomorrow. Amen. This, this day, He has given me his grace and this day i can do all things through christ who strengthens me amen you know god just playing out doesn't want us worrying about our life and i'm going to close with a story about uh, the apostle peter from the book of acts um you know while we're talking about worrying i'm going to talk about this great story it's acts chapter 12 1 through 11 and in verse 1 it says, It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw, when he, King Herod, when he, when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And verse 4 mm -hmm. says, After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So in verse 5 it says, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Now, I want you to notice verse 6. It says, The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, and I underline this, it says, Peter was sleeping between two guards. Bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Now look at this verse 7 here. It says, Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. I think he was still half asleep. He, he, was. he wasn't worrying about anything. He wasn't worried about anything. Then verse 10 says, <laughs> They passed the first and second guard and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. And they went through it, 
When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. Wow. You know, here's Peter. <laughs> You know, he could, he could have had plenty to worry about after his arrest and imprisonment. He knew that Herod had James, the brother of John, put to death just a short time earlier. I'm sure Peter thought his fate was getting ready to be the same. Amen. But the night before Peter's trial and imminent execution, Peter was very soundly asleep between two guards you know, Peter could have been up all night sweating it all out and worrying about the next day. It even says in the book of Acts, uh, uh, Acts 12 and verse 7 that the angel had to literally strike Peter to wake him up. <laughs> you know, I said, hey. Wake up, wake up. Get up. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes I put my wife to bed. She's asleep in her easy chair and I'll shake her and, and oh, it'll, you know, startle her. <laughs> But I get her to bed, amen. But, but not, he wasn't even startled. I don't think he was even all the way away. I yeah. think he was half asleep still. He but just, not only he was he asleep, angel. but he was in a very deep sound sleep. Yes. Peter knew in whom he believed. You know, I read this story and it makes me think of an event in my life back in 2003. Uh, you know, in 2003, it had a pretty bad heart attack and I don't know if I ever told you uh, how I felt but anyway this is uh, y you know they they at first they tried the angioplasty but it failed and, and uh, so they were going to have to do uh, open heart surgery on me and they kept telling me that I could die during the procedure and I think they even told my wife that and I can't you know I couldn't hardly talk I was weak and I don't know what all but I, I kept nodding my head like yeah I understand I understand but in my mind I literally had no fear and I'm not just saying this to try to sound holy I, this what was really going on inside of me you know I kept thinking I'm either going to wake up walking on the streets of gold or I was going to wake up in recovery and as you can tell the Lord brought me through amen amen um, but I was not worried about my life. Amen. Praise God. Uh, don't pray and ask the Lord to put you in his good and perfect will unless you really mean it. Amen. Uh, sometimes you won't understand the way things come about, but God says in his word, that all things are working together Amen. for your good. Now, the flip side of that story, on my side, they were telling, like Pastor Steve said, they were telling me the same thing. They were telling me he could die while they were doing surgery. And uh, it just rose up in my spirit, man. I was not at peace, and I was scared, but, but the Word of God rose up in me uh referring back to i believe it's in uh, uh psalms or proverbs where it says i didn't look it up here before our, our um, bible study but it says fear not the day of the evil report or, fear not evil tidings and and that just kind of came that came up in my spirit and um uh we we had a sunday school teacher came up there uh, Sam Batiste and prayed with me and so I was really blessed to have him we need one another when he would have a yeah. crisis but God's word just rose up in me you know just fear not the the day of the evil report or fear not evil tidings I'll have to look that up yeah. but, but um, <clears throat> God's word is powerful and if we trust God we can live without worry and without fear Amen. You know, I'm a firm believer that God's well able. Uh, I'm not in the name it and claim it, okay? I, 
I'm not but believe, we believe God answers prayer when we pray according to Amen. His Word. I'm, yeah, I believe that. I'm, I'm not into believing God for mega millions. And I mean, if He wants to give me mega millions, praise God. We'll, you know, use it for the glory of God. But I'm just your average old guy. And uh, the Lord takes care of us and supplies yes, our needs. Yes, He does. And He watches over us and He protects us. Amen. Amen. He heals us. And. Uh, but I'd like to close tonight's Bible study with a couple of great scriptures from the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, in verse 28, verses 11 and 12, it says, The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb and the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground in the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, ne next, uh, next time we get together, we're going to start Matthew chapter seven, and we're going to talk about judging others. I know none of you's ever done that. No. <laughs> I know I have, but anyway, we're going to talk about judging others and, and what Jesus has to say you about You know, when it. we learn God's word about yeah. something, that'll help us too. You yeah. Know, not to, if, if you know, like sometimes we do have problems judging people, but if we study God's word, that word will come into our heart and, and come to our mind when we're yeah. tempted to judge others. Amen. But we're going to, we're going to pick up uh, in Matthew chapter 7. Uh, when we finish chapter 7, that'll be it for the series on the Sermon on the Mount. And I know I've been harping and talking about doing a study on Revelation and Daniel and this and that, but if the Lord tarries, eventually we're going to get there. But I've already started writing our next series, which I feel the Lord put on my heart to do, and I've entitled it The Mystery of the Rapture. And... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a series on that, and uh, so uh, I want you to just hang with us, and and I, I hope that you've been blessed by the word of God tonight, like my wife and I have, and and uh, you know, like I said at the beginning of the Bible study, uh, if you'd like to get in contact with us, you can you can find us at HaynesMinistries.org. All of our contact information is there our live stream schedule our prayer meeting schedule you can listen to all of our bible studies yeah, you, you can watch the archives uh, but anyway we've been uh, jesus has been teaching his disciples how to live amen and uh, i'd like to turn it over to my wife susan she's gonna if you don't know jesus as your lord and savior she's going to present him to you now if you don't know Jesus and you want to know him, Jesus is God's only begotten son. He came and lived a sinless life, the only man that ever has. Uh, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus came to this earth, he taught, about God the Father. He lived a sinless life. He was the Passover lamb that the Old Testament talks about. He died on a cross in our place to pay the penalty for our sins. But the third day he rose again from the dead. And the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So let's pray this prayer together. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. So I could live a life of victory. So I could live a life of victory. Jesus. Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. I make you Lord of my life. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer 
in, in faith believing, you are now a child of God. You may feel something or you may not feel something, but the just live by faith. Your old sins for, for the things that you have done, they've just been wiped out. You have a clean, fresh start starting right now. Get out your Holy Bible. If you don't have one, get one. Get a Bible app on your phone. Start studying what God has for you. Find a church that teaches God's Word and accepts you. And join us every other Tuesday night on HanesMinistries.org and for a Word in Due Season to study your Bible and learn about your Savior and your God. Amen. God bless. We'll see you next time.